Hey traders from around the world, this is Jeremy Alexander Newsom with Real Life Trading. Hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. It's June 22nd and I hope you had an amazing Father's Day weekend. I got a lot of things done. Um, tried to keep my mind off a few things. It was uh, kind of a tough Sunday. But congratulations to Jonathan Higgins, who is a father. He's a real life trader. Gave birth to his son Dylan, I think either today or yesterday. I haven't gotten the exact date or time. But his firstborn... New young couple, congratulations to them. Great job, Higgins. Um, and shout out to your wife. I've never actually met or talked to your wife. She did all the work, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> so shout out to Miss Higgins, yes. Miss Higgins, Jonathan's wife, thanks. Um, congratulations again, man, I appreciate it. Thanks for filling me in. So I had a good weekend Sunday, I did. I mean, I got a lot of things done. Uh, got to hang out, did pool time. Got to do a trail run. Just want to keep my mind occupied because it was the first Father's Day without my dad. But it was uh, still a great time to reflect and to email all the dads that are out there and talk to them and just chat with some traders. It was a good weekend overall, guys. Truly had a great time. Weather was beautiful, about 99 degrees in Nashville. And it is still pretty much a scorcher today. Let's check out the general markets overall. And really, there's not much to update on the markets. There's truly not. Here's kind of the overall standpoint, and I'm still with this one. On the DIA, the Dow Jones ETF, if the candle I'm pointing to, the blue arrow, blue arrow is not taken out by July 1st, then I'm bullish to neutral and I will remain bullish to neutral. That's really about it, guys. Until something changes, until we get a close below that pivot, that is a very, very strong pivot. And realistically, guys, we're in a channel. Right? Do we break out? Um, I think so at some point. You know, we kind of go a little bit higher, but we're in a channel. We're trading sideways. We're bullish to neutral. That's it. That's really all we're doing. The, t the top will come one day, but there's no reason to try to pick the top on the general market right now. Just, just no, no benefit in doing it. Um, got a bull put spread on our SPY. Now, Friday, here's the interesting thing, actually. Earlier this morning, I did do a real life stock review. But apparently my recording application, which I'm using now, just absolutely crashed on me and uh, I was not able to save it. So it's kind of lame because it was a really, really good update. Bottom line, I just did a bunch of deletions of stock option spreads that we did that expired on Friday. We had like three or four on the DIA. We had like three or four on the SPY and they were. we had some on the IWM. There was a lot of spreads expired on Friday for us. Anyway, here is some analysis that we had a few days ago on SPY. Still, I'm more bullish than neutral. Uh, I'm not really excited about call options, You know, owning them. If you have shares, you're doing covered calls, great. If you're just kind of sitting back and relaxing, great. But as of right now, we got the bull put spread down there, 202, 201. That's just kind of doing its thing. The DIA doing its thing. Here's your QQQs. And uh, on the 16th, we also got into a 104, 103 July bull put spread for 12 cents. Here's a little bit of a double bottom pattern, right? We're at the, uh, we, we retest the neckline and we're now at the breakout level. My analysis today though, in the third hour for just a few moments ago is this market has been a rough on the breakouts. Do your best to take the retest or the pullback. So if we close above 111.31, I am still more bullish than bearish. My targets, uh, I still do think even this year actually, that the Qs get up to the all-time high of 120 before we have a quote-unquote market correction or a pullback. Here's the IWM, which did actually get triggered in bullish today. And this was based on the candle on the 18th of June. So the 18th of June, bullish candle. Here's my notes on it. And uh, for those following us, we had the 116, 115 June bull put spread that expired worthless. So the IWM is the only index or indice, if you will, the Russell it appears it's making higher highs and higher lows and appears it's breaking out. Overall, more bullish than bearish. GoPro, GoPro had a little bit of a gap today and we did profitably trade this one for a little over an R today in the afternoon. And this is my analysis on GoPro. It does look a little bit like a double top. That I will agree with. And you know, here's your neckline for that double top. We kind of closed a little bit below it today, just barely, but keep in mind, I'm more bearish than bullish, but the 50 EMA is a strong target. 53.36. So we could trade right down there today and just do something like this, and that's entirely possible. There's no money for a bear call spread up there on GoPro, so I'm not even worrying about it, just kind of sitting back and doing our thing. Apple. So here's Apple, great buying zone at 120.119. Doubt if we get down there. It's a decent, very, very cute, small little gap today. Honestly, guys, I uh, sent you out the Spring Portfolio. There's a really cool website if you get a chance to check it out called reallifetrain.com. 
And uh, the site's brand new, guys. If you get a chance to click on articles, click on trade setups, you can see all the trade setups that we're posting. Here's a stock review of Google, and here's our summer portfolio edition. You can click on the summer portfolio, scroll down, and here's my analysis on Apple. So analysis on Apple really is, guys, I'm pretty neutral. So I'm going to do a 135, 134 July bear call spread, 115, 110 July bull put spread, completing the iron condor. Really not tons of premium in that, about 28 to 30 cents, uh, which is a little bit better than 5% return, but it's not bad for a stock just trading sideways, really not doing much at all. Here's Tesla, just a quick update on Tesla. Nice little lower shadow today. I am bullish, or at least more bullish than bearish on Tesla. Got some uh, analysis for some bull pit spreads. You guys are gonna get used to these spreads. I do them all the time because got to, right? If the market's not moving directionally, which it's not, then you should probably not be doing directionally trading, you know, non-directionals. So on Tesla, if you do a bull put spread, 240, 235, July week one, bottom line, you make your premium on that trade, which is about a 10% ROI, uh, give or take, as long as Tesla stays above 240, All right? So that's interesting. Um, as a quick update, if you guys wanna know our um, spread, I don't know if you call it analysis, history, Updates track record. There's the there's what I'm looking for. If you want to if you want to know our spread track record, um, we do have the our trading logs and everything posted on our worksheet that we're tracking along. I'll just kind of show you the spread journal really quick. If we hop over here to the credit spread journal. Now remember, real life trading. We teach credit spreads for free. Here's the journal starting back from February. Um, one loss, two losses, three losses, four losses, five losses. That's it out of 105 that we've done thus far. Now, some of them are still open, by the way, just FYI. So this is, you know, something could change, entirely plausible, but uh, th there's gotta be, a, there's gonna be a red number soon. Has to be, right? Last trade we unraveled was uh, NSC and Tesla. So this one right here, th there's gotta be a bearish one coming, or I'm not, no, sorry, not a bearish one. There's gonna be a loser soon, <laughs> right? I know that for 100% certainty, it's gotta happen just mathematics and probability. So I'll be watching for it. And when it does, I'll make sure to protect ourselves as much as possible. Uh, anyway, guys, as of right now, market sideways, at least more bullish than bearish. I'm trying to keep a good eye on some interesting things shaping up. The only two things that have the best gap right now that I'm keeping a close eye on is ESPR. Da -da 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 -da. If we move lower than 78, 77, I'm more bearish than bullish. Beautiful retest gap coming into the 10 exponential moving average, looking for a possible rollover. Ticker symbol MAC. Same thing, uh, really, really good candle, nice little sell-off today, and it's, it is an inside day candle. The low of today was 76.28, so if you did get triggered in at the end of the day on ticker symbol MAC with a stop at 78.42, makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, just you know, keep a close eye on it, see what it does, but if you're triggered in or you want to look at tomorrow, great. Uh, Burlington Co. Factory, another nice little retest, guys, uh, after this gap down. Coming up, getting a shooting star candle today, looking to see if and how it might roll over. So watching that one as well. Traders from around the world, hope you had a great Monday. June's going incredible for real life trading. Keep in mind, next week we get the announcement webinar. Make sure to register for that, as well as the open house for the morning and afternoon trading floor, along with the recordings. My friends, have a great day. I'll see you later and until next time, which will be Wednesday when I'll be broadcasting from California. Love life, live life, and trade it.